Hello and welcome to Is Anonymous. Hey, this is mine. Get the fuck I out of here. I am your host no. today, Sarah. No. I am joined by Get Rebecca out of here. and Phil. Get out of here. Get out of here with your bullshit. Alright, welcome to Isn't It Obvious. I'm your host, Sarah. Joining me today, Phil, Micah. Oh, do I need to speak louder? Isn't it obvious that today's society is becoming less interested in permanence? Can you give an example? People aren't buying for the next generation. Like, I've already kind of discussed this topic or, well, a similar topic in a previous episode. Um, But I kind of want to explore this impermanence thing a little further. Um, I think the the other topic was, like, we're becoming a subscription culture. Oh, yes, yeah. Um, This, I wanted to kind of more explore this. We're not really, we're not really investing in the next generation. I feel like we're kind of, like, giving up. Um, as a society, which is really kind of depressing. But like, so I just was thinking people aren't buying for the next generation or rather the next generation isn't really, they don't want what the older generation has to like pass down, right? Mm. Like you've got all of these old hand-me-down things that, you know, like your parents are gifting you to like get you started, but you don't really want them. They're just sort of like this, um, interim piece of furniture, right? That you're just sort better of waiting. Nothing. It is better than nothing, but you're still waiting to get the thing that you want that's in style or in fashion or it's something that's more easy to move. Like, a lot of that fucking old stuff is this heavy fucking oak yeah, furniture. Yeah, real, real oak shit. Yeah, I mean, it's real wood, right? And it's not paneled. It's nope, not it's fucking wood. heavy. And, like, people are moving a lot more than they were back in the day, right? So, like... I would rather move like a shitty Ikea piece of furniture or not just throw it in the dumpster. Uh Right. Um, And then just buy new. Are you saying this is a detriment or a benefit to society's own? Yes. (laughs) Yes. The answer is yes. That's a detriment and a benefit? Can be. Um, I think it's in some ways a benefit because I feel like in some ways we're becoming less materialistic. Um, so we're consuming less. We don't need as much space. We don't need as much heavy stuff. We don't take as much with us. However, that doesn't stop us from consuming things and throwing the shit that we buy for the interim away. So that's the detriment part. Um, I, I'm thinking of like, you know, some friends who have recently moved who, you know, like maybe get a dumpster and they throw all their, you know, all of their shitty Ikea furniture yeah. into the dumpster or even their like nice used stuff that they can't sell because no one wants it and yeah. they can't use because it doesn't really fit with what they're going to. Like, I just went up, um, went up north. I thought I was going on vacation. That was a lie. Um, I ended up moving my um, my hoarder. <laughs> okay, that's that's a little frust. That's that might be a little. Well, okay. No, it's not. I had to dig out a hoarder great aunt who had three different storage containers it's, full of her shit from SCV. It's it's not bad. SCV, I think even if she oh. were to, she would she would probably admit she's she's she definitely has an issue. Like it's it's she's basically a hoarder. Um, she's not as bad as like the people you see on TV, but she's still pretty bad. Um, she just can't, she has a hard, where... hard time throwing stuff away. Right. Um, but she has a lot of this stuff that she just she can't, it's garbage. It's basically garbage. No one's, no one's going to use it. Um, there's no like next generation to pass this, some of this down to, like no one's going to want it. Wait, hold on. Nobody wants the newspaper from 1993? No, that, that is part of it. That, that was some of Who it. Who doesn't want a newspaper from 1993? That was Did O.J. do it? <clears throat> but we um, <laughs> we moved some heavy ass fucking furniture, man. Like some solid furniture. I guarantee when she passes on, that's going straight into a dumpster. Like that's that's sad to me. I I don't. Uh, when you were beginning this question, I thought it was going to be more like 
is it an obvious that the generation that's in charge right now, which would be arguably our generation, maybe generation mm. X? No, no, we're, we're, still right. we're, we're, we're working. Yeah, okay. we're working Let's on it. Let's just say our generation. Just <laughs> we're starting. We're... Just uh, Gen X doesn't do shit. I think we can agree upon that. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're all dead. They have no opinions. Worthless. So. Yeah. We're Gen X, correct? So no. we're, we can just no. make fun of Gen no. X. No. no, we're millennials. We're millennials. Fuck. Yeah. No. Gen X. Gen X are fuckers. Yeah. They don't do shit. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's just pretend that it's... Pete Buttigieg? Fuck him. So let's pretend that we're that it's the millennials that are in charge just for the sake of moving this conversation a little bit more forward. I thought when you said that we don't care about permanence and we don't really... You know, like, next generation. I, I thought you meant, like, what we value. Like, we don't value education. We don't value sustainable so, ecosystems. No, it's stuff. Value, those, no, 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 we're, uh, no. It's stuff it's that I'm thinking Corporeal of. things. Okay. It's not uh, the existential. It's we not. We do value experience. We do value yeah, knowledge. Yeah, that's why I think a lot but it's of not our generation permanence. travels a lot. That's not permanence to me. That I mean, it, it can be. It can be in some ways, but it. We're more. We put more value in entertainment. We put more value in education. Education. We put and more value. It's not value so much like getting like. Going to India is more to go to India, not to get kitschy we put, shit. Yeah, well, that's what mm. I'm saying. We we put so much value in experience, which education and entertainment oh, fall into. I, I will argue this. Less stuff. Prior, sorry, you have your hand up, but like this, yeah, is a meaningful experience. I feel for the three of us. Oh yeah, yeah. And Versus, this is an impermanent thing, right? Yep. I mean, this is although we're recording it, so there is some permanence to it. Yeah, yeah. but so we're right. not doing this for that permanence. We're doing oh. it for the impermanence of, of our now. discussion of mm-hmm. these esoteric topics. And also for me to listen to these things, I'm like, God, I'm such an idiot. But I'm wise now, but I was such a fucking idiot in that episode. We're still idiots. Yeah, Yeah. well, the when I listen, I argue with myself with the points that I know I'm going to make. and It's hilarious, right? It's like Mario Kart Ghost. It's like hilarious. You're, you're, <laughs> you're like, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. The, oh, oh no. no, 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 I'm getting behind. I'm getting behind. I'm getting behind. Um... I would argue, though, that philosophy of kind of explaining to your next generation, whether it's your nieces or nephew or your own children, mm-hmm. that's a lot more permanent than, say, uh, an alarm clock or you know some sort of thing. nice couch or mm-hmm. thing. Because I, I think that's really ultimately what we... Uh, well, I guess you're right that our generation cares about more is this idea and ideas can stick around a lot longer than, I don't know, a fruit bowl stand. Mm-hmm. So but Even prior to, I feel uh, our generation specifically, as millennials or Gen Xers, are dealing with uh, still the depression and the not equal expansion of uh, capitalism in America prior to, and I say this in reference to, I slept on a bed from the 80s, until a week ago. Mm. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> but also... <laughs> but, like, it's that type of... Uh, I think a lot of us are still, like, we're dealing with what we have. Mm-hmm. And some of us can seek, but the waste of the seeking for something financially more, regardless, too. Like, I've I've never bought a chair. All, <laughs> all of my chairs are hand-me-downs. All my coaches are hand-me-downs. And, like, I'm, I'm oh dealing God. with the permanence of the generation before me, where I haven't gone to a store and bought something new. Hell, my car isn't new. It was still owned by someone else. Mm. I'm dealing with the impermanence of the prior generation, but... Now. See, I'm fighting against that. So, Sarah, then, like, for you, when you're getting things, like, more permanence, are you saying that you prefer permanence or you prefer experiences or... What so, is the... So I had... Cut off the thing I just said. I had a really... Sorry, but... Okay, so I had a really... This is what spurred this topic. Um, is I had a really good um, experience with a very old friend of mine who came to visit. And we were enjoying scotch at um, a place in downtown Minneapolis. And... He's very into scotch. He's very knowledgeable at scotch uh, about scotch. Um, and 
he was he was saying like you can't get this particular like this place we were going they had um some that you can't get anymore because they're just they don't they they had a limited supply right and like this is it and so in their collection at this place in downtown minneapolis they had um some you know like you you can only get it if it's in your collection and I'm like, well, that sucks that I can't get that anymore. And he's like, well, you just got to appreciate the, the, the impermanence. Like, you have to appreciate the experience for what it is. And that's what spurred this uh, um, thought. And I'm just like, you know, we really... And I'm not saying, like, no other generation before us. And I don't even know that it's a generational thing. I think it's just society is becoming more this um, as, as we just evolve as a society and i don't know that again i don't think it is a generation but i think it's we're moving in this direction to where it's it's less about stuff and more about experience which i don't think is wrong and i actually think that's a good thing in some ways but it does it does halt this next generation um, stuffness, if that makes sense. I don't, like, it's hard for me to describe. Material. But, like, materialistic stuff. You don't pass down anything except for your knowledge, if anything. Okay, so then, Micah, would you consider this to be a detriment or a benefit? Both? Yeah, see, yes. No. I don't know that it's really? bad or good. Well, since it's I just went to like the benefit of me benefiting from the luxury of those uh, before me, as all my things are hand me downs, yeah. is definitely a ben- benefit of the permanence. But is it luxury? That's... I would say so more. Is it? Well, no, because your point of IKEA, which may is be the trash. pinnacle of impermanence. Yeah. <laughs> It, it is really might be the, the, the pinnacle of impression. It's, a, it's like, not we're bad, gonna the, but it's not. Yeah, good. yeah. We're gonna, make, we're gonna make the most it's gonna last for two years. Shit that you will just throw away. That it'll look kind of good for the first year or two. Yeah, and, and then, like fingers crossed, when you throw it away, we'll recycle it properly. That then your huga fella couch <laughs> turns into a different huga fooler in five years or Maybe. however they're gonna name it. Maybe, but probably not. Yeah, well, and it's all particle board stuff, which, okay, on the one hand, garbage, and it's not going to last very long, but on the other hand, it's a lot lighter. It's a lot lighter. You can move that shit. Right. A and lot it's not easier. A synthetic leather or. Yep. And even, you can take uh, it apart and you can store, you can put it in, a, in the back of a car instead. Of, you don't need to have a big thing to move it. You can break well, it down can, in some parts. Well, yeah, flat. Yeah. Some yeah. things. Aren't they usually flat packed? Yeah. yeah, a lot of them are flat packed that can fit into a most like. And like a table, you can take off. Bands. You know, yeah. like a table, you can take off the legs usually. Like you can disassemble things to a certain extent, mm-hmm. but like a lot of chairs, like old chairs, no, nah, you can't really. That's. Oh yeah, I have a pair of uh, not a pair. They're a, a set of a chair and. A, a love seat, air quote, that are like two parts that cannot be disassembled. Uh, and yeah. it's going to be like, this is taking up my back seat, period, mm-hmm. because I have a sedan and that's the only piece I can move. But also, like in terms of permanence, it's an art piece from the 50s that mm-hmm. in itself is a thing that shouldn't be taken apart. Yeah. So I, I definitely see the benefit of passing on that permanence but like i'm a single dude in my 30s probably not gonna have kids and it'll be passed along to someone in my family i don't know if that same appreciation that i have for it that i don't want to gain its financial benefit at this point because i think the the piece is worth more than whatever money it may be worth I don't know if that's the same thing for whomever will get it after I die. Right. Well, I was talking to like our boss or whatever, and like he was saying, he had this bedroom set that was just solid wood. It was like hand carved, mm-hmm. beautiful, right? His kids didn't want it. No, yeah. oh. it's not. Yeah. like it's. Wow. Well, it's you know it's solid wood. It's nice. It's gonna like it's 
it oh god, it weighs would 65 la- pounds. And that's the thing. It's like it My just, fingers can't lift 65 pounds. And you know what? It's not the aesthetic of today. No. It's the aesthetic of the 50s mm-hmm. or the 40s oh, or whatever yeah. the fuck no. it is. You know, like I don't... Like oh, you, I, you can't... <laughs> I have a saguaro cactus that has been hollowed out and made into a lamp with two uh, like platforms out of the other arms. Uh, I don't know. It, it's a piece of shit. Yeah, <laughs> I'll admit that. Who thought? It's a fucking. It, it's the carcass of a saguaro good, yeah. cactus. Yeah. Who thought that? But was like looking good. at it as a whole, it's like eh. that's fucking neat. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you appreciate it. Yeah, and it's behind my bed. I can see it. <laughs> like, but I have it. But it's like I don't. I don't want to sell it because it is. I don't know of another light that looks like that. Mm-hmm. So it's incredibly unique. To Excuse me, to my experience. But also, it's like... Who here, would want this? Here, nephew, Who take it! You? And nephew would be like... What the fuck is this? Garbage. Yeah, and they'd throw it out because no. you're a, you become the hoarder uncle who just is like, I can't get rid of this myself, so I'm going to gift it to someone Most thinking... I have two beds in my room right now. Thinking it's going to make someone else, you know, happy. But it's like the... the like Straight to the dumpster. No, yeah. Those we are... We are Okay, uh, to your point, we are becoming a more impermanent culture, but I feel my appreciation for things that have that same impermanence because of the lack of, like, maybe as a history, like, the the history behind it and all of that might be fading away. But cyclical nature means that that type of not nostalgia because it's not something people are trying to but well, like that's the thing. if somebody can see it and see it's weird and dig into it and they can spread that it's it may have some relevance in the future that may not be of a familial basis well see that's what I'm trying to struggle against in my own in my own experience is like I want things that are mine but that are more permanent in nature so, like, I do like to buy new things that are of value to me, that I'm going to use for many, many years. I don't have children, so, like, I'm not passing this, these things down necessarily. I could give them, I have a very large family, so, like, yes, I could give them to my godson. And if he doesn't want them, I could give them to, like, any of my second cousins or first cousins once removed or however that fucking works. You know, like, I could give it to the next generation in my family if I wanted, um, or not, and they can just, I guess, go in the dumpster, which is kind of sad, but, like, I want these things that are of a permanent nature. I do, like, I do appreciate, I do appreciate woods. I do appreciate fabrics that are high quality. I don't always get them because they're expensive yeah. right like it's like what's the like is it worth it but like i bought a new car not too mm-hmm. long ago like a year ago and like it in on the one hand it's like the stupidest thing you can do like as investment wise because as soon as you take that off the lot it loses like half of its value right mm-hmm. like it's it's basically i'm biting my throwing tongue. your fucking money i'm away. biting my tongue but i'm just gonna let it go but okay i also want Something that no one else has fucking used before. I also want the the like no one else no one else's problems, and I'm not inheriting that. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Nope. Buying a new car is not not a bad idea. It is a terrible investment in the sense that anything that depreciates is a terrible investment. Yeah. So yeah, fair enough, but. As far as cars go, like purchasing new or purchasing used or purchasing a used uh, luxury car or purchasing whatever, it's it's not a there's not really that much difference as far as like risk reward. Mm -hmm. So you buy used, you you're you're gonna roll the dice and you can get a lemon, Mm -hmm. and then you're like, well, you should have known better. Or you can get a really nice sweet car because you know, and you, you only can mitigate that risk, but. You can also just mitigate it almost completely by buying new. But if you buy a new one of a new cycle, then you have cutting edge technology. Yay, Mm -hmm. but you have cutting edge technology, boo, right? Like, so you never, you know, because it may not be reliable. I mean, I had my first car for 17 years. Right. 
17 years and I'm like, I had a CD player and a radio. And watching all of my friends get their nice new upgrades and me sitting here with my sad CD player. Mm. <laughs> like, I really want Bluetooth. Yeah, well, I, it, it yeah. took me until 30 until I had a car that was Bluetooth. And I overpaid for my 2014 car. Mm. I, okay. But at this uh, point, and I've, so I bought it for nine grand, which overpaying because it was at 95,000. So 5,000 more, it's going to drop by like two grand. Uh, but since then, I've put seven grand into it mm. because of all, all the other errors. I'm going to run that fucking car into the ground. Yeah. I, I when I walk that. away from that car, it is going to be totaled on the side of a highway. <laughs> and I'm going to give the deuces to whatever tow company is going to take it to the scrapyard. I purchased one of my favorite used cars. Um, it was a 2009 Hyundai Sonata. And it was one of the first of the Sonatas that had Bluetooth. And it was a wonderful car that got totaled. <laughs> so, I mean, it's like, uh, for fuck's sake. So anyway, new cars are not a bad deal. They, you are just buying more mitigation to, re- to reduce risk. Yep. So because you could just end up spending thousands of dollars on a used car just but if you have a lemon if you're lucky but if you get a lemon yeah. like they'll fucking like you can you have a you have a year window or whatever right uh, or yeah, two, usually so, 3 years or, or you can or, or you can buy mm-hmm. the or you can and, buy the warranty well, I, and it's I, like I, I, hey if there's anything wrong we'll fucking fix yeah, it yeah because you're supposed to stand by your car yeah. it's new right yeah. Yeah. I do have a caveat I uh, after I purchased my vehicle I would not to put substantial money into it until like 3 years in right and that time it's, you know, seven. Like, I've used it. Yeah. I know where my damage came from because a chunk of the highway was missing. And oh. when yeah. no one was coming the other way, I just, like, go around the thing that said hole here. And I hit uh, it on 60. So, I know where my flaws yeah. are. I, it's me as a bad driver. No. It's you as a driver. That's reassuring. I'm Mike, a good driver. Mike is the best driver <laughs> that I know. And so... The fact that uh, Minnesota cars in Minnesota <laughs> winter and Minnesota driveways. You're felt unsafe with me? Sarah! A times. Sarah! A few times. Anyway, sorry. Moving on, Sarah, you're sorry. saying that you do like permanence in the sense of your like, objects of your own choosing? I do. I, I do. Um, and I don't know if that's me, like, just, like, saying fuck you to the the society is like want for this this movement towards this impermanence towards this fuck the next generation idea like and it's not like it's fuck the next generation well, but it's like no one's buying these these permanent things they're buying these particle board furniture like they're buying these shitty IKEA or Target or Walmart like Amazon basics. Amazon like basics, you know, bookshelves and dressers and they're they're garbage. They're gonna last you five years they might last you longer than five years if you don't give a fuck, but they'll last you five years before they belong in a dumpster. Yeah. Okay. Right. So is that a more reflection of commercially the quality that were sold? And the fact that the companies benefit off of things that aren't as functional as they could be. Part of that. Like, going, going back to cars. Uh, no, no, no. But going back to cars specifically, because that is it's a necessity in American life, sadly. So is furniture, I would say. Not necessarily. You can sit on a floor, you can sit on a... Yeah. You don't need a couch, you can have a pillow, and one of those is much cheaper. True, but one of those is also much grosser. No. But then you're dealing with and like societal back uh, pains of sitting on the floor on a pillow. Sure, okay, that's but, true. But yeah. like the mechanics of a vehicle made in 1970 was far more user friendly than a vehicle made in 2007. Oh. So like that was my the, other topic. Fuck, we can't go too far into this. Okay. But go on, go on. So even dealing with uh, chairs and sofas and all of that, like a uh, household, like even nothing that has a cushion, um, there's been a deterrence societally from people 
making their own stuff. Mm-hmm. As opposed to, I can go to Ikea. It's cheaper. Takes can, a lot less time. Right. Takes a lot less time. Not necessarily cheaper. Mm. Kind of. It's cheaper. But not for the quality. It's cheaper because the time spent. Sure. Mm-hmm. I have an end table from 1929 that I still use that my grandfather made. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that same end table. Yeah, but could you make? Work. But could you could you make that end table now? Yeah. Okay, so you could make it. Do you have the tools to make it? Kinda. Kinda. I know people who have the tools. So you to have access. Do those so you access. No, yes, yeah, so this, this is time. back to my last topic. We pay for access. Yeah. Like access the, the, the to entertainment. Access but, to... But we can no, no, rent no, no, tools. No, 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 no. We can not, borrow no, no, tools. Stop, 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 stop. stop. Oh, not, not, please. Not to dude. go into that thing. Okay, please mansplain. Go ahead. It's go not on. a better mansplaining. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> please do tell. The ease of a buying a thing is a consequence of capitalism. Oh, he's mansplaining to me. Okay, go on. <laughs> But wait, 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 before we go further... Hold on, my testicles aren't on the table right now. Okay. Now they are. That sounded a little too heavy, but all right. You don't know how large are. All right, eh, so... You're right. Aside from the argument of capitalism... But I can imagine. Basically shoving this shit down our throat, right? Yeah. Saying, mm-hmm. hey, you know, you can just buy just cheap crap from us at cheapshit.com. Don't go there, guys. <laughs> um, or you can use... Your connections, your access, your own personal labor to make these things. And yeah, it'll take you What's some What's the cost time, benefit, though? But then it'll cost you something. No. Less. That's the wildest no, no, no. fucking thing. No, it's not, though. Because yep. time is fucking money, Micah. No. but Yeah, it is. No. So, how Americans are built, nine hours are gone to capitalism. Mm, minimum. Well, let's just say, say eight. No, I'm nine. Just saying that. Transit. Transportation. Transit. Transportation. Yeah. yeah, okay, fine. So nine hours. You work an eight hour shift, you're factoring in half hour driving to, half hour driving from, or fifteen minutes driving to, half hour lunch, however you want to factor it out, even bump it up to ten hours. Yep, ten hours of every day are gone to feed the capitalist machine. Mm-hmm. Not every night is gonna be capped up by doing things. We try to. We have uh False ideas of what are our, our real act, uh, re- relaxations of what uh, of what capitalism is saying. Like, hey, hey, hey! It's Tuesday night. What are you doing? Trivia. Yeah. Hey, hey! It's Wednesday. What are you doing? Fucking bingo! Like we have all these things where we impermanent. It, it's imp- but, but this is the downside of impermanence, where evening trivia is still an impermanent action, mm-hmm. even though benefits may be gained from it, or uh, going to bingo, or going to play poker, or whatever. All these things are impermanent actions that may have minor uh, fiduciary benefits. Mm-hmm. But it's not if you replaced all of that to, hey, it's Wednesday night. No, cut some wood, make some shit, then watch some TV. Like, an hour of woodworking over the course of a month can build you an end table that'll last 100 years. Yes, but how much does that cost you time-wise? An hour a night? Yes, which adds up. Uh-huh. How, long, how many hours, though? But, how many hours does it take to build the end table? Uh, like, five? Five? Spread that over a month? A day's worth of work? No, like, an so, hour of work. Okay, half a day's worth of work? No, an... Uh, an hour of one hour of work yeah, over, over a month. Yeah, but okay, one hour. What, uh, sorry, sorry, per sorry, month. Sorry, sorry. Or Four one hours, hour. Five hours per month. Five hours per month can build you an end table. Yeah, and then you have to wait a month. <laughs> okay. Or you can just go no. to the store, buy it today, have it done. It's there for your use right. immediately. I got it. Instant gratification. No. Well, yes, and that is the arguments. That is my argument against your impermanence theory, where it's, it's our idea, though. our uh, how we are fed is we need instant gratification as opposed to spreading things out. Where if I start making an end table at the beginning of June, at the end of June, if I spend one hour per week building that end table, I will have an end table at the end of June. 
we are all about instant gratification as opposed to yeah, what then, we can make that can but last then you beyond also, the shitty IKEA food. But then you me. also need to have those tools. You need to buy those tools. You need to maintain those tools. That's a lot of fucking work, Micah. It's not but, just the end table. But, it is also the tools and the maintenance of them. That's but, a lot of fucking work where you could just go to fucking Walmart, buy a $50 shitty end table, and then you're done. How you're, many months are you buying that $50 shitty dollar end table? It's not even fifty dollars. In fact, it's probably like twenty dollars. Irrelevant. Irrelevant. Takes you a half a day's work. Okay, right. I'm gonna. And then the tools for a, can build more things than what you spend. Yeah, that but are you on. actually going to? Are you actually going to Hold use on. those to buy those things? I'm gonna use a capitalist things? thing. Investment. All right, guys. I'm yeah, gonna have for to the just... people who make that a hobby, sure, but not for the people who are like, I just want a fucking one end table. I just but need one end table. I have say everything you're else. Not I need. Prioritizing creation. That's my issue. Yeah. Not and everyone's it's a creative. Issue. Not everyone's okay. creative. I am gonna just end this intelligence cube debate and by saying oh, it, it, no, don't don't yeah, No, I wanna to hear it. shush you hash on to another podcast. I am, I'm hashing on to it's not I, well anyway. Look, I yeah, feel I'm though that from a person that has kids is a bit different mm-hmm. than a people that do not have to worry about critters that are constantly trying to find out new ways to kill themselves. That's true. And so true. for sure, I used to, as a adolescent, look at people's homes and be like, man, you're, you know, mom and dad, why the fuck you had the shittiest things, right? And then now as a mom and dad sort of level, I'm like, oh, fuck, that now makes sense. It. it makes sense because everything gets de- destroyed. Mm-hmm. Nice things get destroyed. Good things, high quality things, works of art will get destroyed there. And so you can't have, this is why we can't have nice things. And so like the editor and I, we look at the situation like we would like to have these nice things because it's a quality of life improvement for us, but we ain't gonna get it because it will be ruined. And when can we get it? I don't know, maybe later, like when the, when the children can behave themselves, same reason I don't have leather. Games. It's the same reason I don't have leather uh, furniture because my cats have their fucking claws. So it they really, jump off of it, it's ruined. So I totally understand why it's convenient for the machine to give like, hey, you want fifty dollar piece of shit thing that you just put something on there? It doesn't matter if it breaks. Fine, it's a fifty dollar piece of shit. But at the same time, like it also makes sense why the dad starts buying tools Mm -hmm. like i never understood why my dad would buy tools and have a workbench and i'm like what the fuck is this shit you don't do shit on this he's like oh he's fixing something and i'm like why why don't you just buy something new he's like shut up son i'll show you how to (laughs) use this thing this is the shittiest tools ever because he gets them at menards Mm -hmm. which is a really shitty place but his theory was you buy a cheap one first and if it breaks you buy a little bit better you know that you buy then like you buy a higher quality of that one because you know you'll use it more so a lot of garbage tier level. Yeah, you get you get the the whack. Yeah, and then that drill breaks. You're like, well, I can't. I'm not gonna buy a Dewalt yet. Yeah, but I'll buy a Craftsman. Yeah, and then, then you break that. Yeah. And you're like, well, I've used this enough to buy the next thing. And at that time, they have a dad coalition, and they, every dad loves to be yeah. like, hey, oh no, it's not a dad coalition. It's a dad clan. It's a dad. You got you got, you got the Milwaukee's. You got the Dewalts. Well. Well, yeah. Like, you're dealing with, like, Mad Max but, type style gang okay. things with daddom. They love to one-up each other like uh-huh. Mario, right? Yeah. So well, like, oh, just... you don't have a hammer drill, huh? Well, guess what? I got a hammer drill from Makita. Thank mm-hmm. you, by the way, that for letting us letting me borrow your hammer drill that it, one time when I needed to... It gives people smug... <laughs> Wait, hold on! Hold on! Whoa, whoa, whoa! In all of this, Phil had a hammer drill. Mm-hmm. Yes. That you used yes. to your the benefit. The editor had the hammer drill. I don't no. know. If, was no. it yours? No. Ooh, okay. Was this yours? This is, this is a, this oh, is a okay. problem. All right. All right. Okay. It's rent versus buy. Mm-hmm. And my theory was buy the shittiest version that costs the same as <laughs> hey, rent. Hey, it yep. was shitty, but it did the job. It was. It's super shitty. It's not a Makita. It's, an no. off, it's like a Nakita. It's like it's not really even a <laughs> Not thing. Kita. So, 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 so. I should make a brand of that. <laughs> That's a point against your topic. It is a point. It's it's a point for both, actually. You buy shitty things, and you buy... You borrow from your neighbors. And you borrow from your neighbors. But that's and that's fine, because humanity should be a community. Yes. and it, it, Sure, but it, that isn't against my point. That's borrowing from your neighbors no, who yes also bought a because shitty then corpor- piece corporations of... Corporations are the antithesis of community. Uh, yeah. So, but that's not what I was getting okay, at. Okay. So it was. No, it wasn't. You, the whole point, like, why no. fix it when you can just buy new? 
No, that's the thing. Okay, uh, with, no. with kids, what you would do is you buy shitty things and you constantly <laughs> fucking fix it. So it's the best of both worlds. Worst of both worlds. You have shitty looking things that you have to spend your time constantly fixing so your kids don't learn new ways <laughs> but, to but also kill Phil, themselves. But also, Phil, unless you are incredibly rich, everything looks kind of shitty. Oh, yeah, everything is going to look shitty. Yeah. Unless you're not like. Unless, no, I think. From my experience, across the spectrum, unless you are very rich, obviously rich, yeah, everything looks shitty. Well, but, if you're yeah, rich, because you're like missed fashion, if you're rich, you're you missed have, whatever. Yeah, no, no, like, you're getting what's what works. If you're Everyone's rich, you have two of everything. You have the stuff for the kids to fuck with and ruin, and then you no, have the replace. nice stuff. Yeah, and replace, yeah. and then you have the nice stuff that they aren't allowed to yes, touch yes, or sit yes. on. But if it gets ruined, you replace it. You do, but it's it's like, and then you hand that down to your kids but your for them kids, to destroy. And yep. then you admonish them every time they ruin yeah, something. Yeah, my, my parents that. don't get to do that. Although uh, there was a little yeah, yeah. bit of it. Well, being 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 poor North Minnesotan, <laughs> like a lazy boy <laughs> that had a scratch in it, years of like, you're gonna take that even with the scratch? Well, yeah, of course I'm gonna take it with the scratch. Really? Yes. Really. Like, uh, sorry, suburban princesses. I had a lot. I don't of know what your don't, upbringings are. No, I, in I had a lot of northern hand-me-downs. northern Minnesota in farmland. Like, shit's hand me downs regardless. I yeah. had a lot of hand me downs, and I'm working my way through them. Um, they are good interim things, but they are not things I want. They are not things I want to keep. They aren't what, things I want to bring with me, even if they're nice things. Like, I've got a couch that my cats have destroyed. That. I is that not their couch now? <laughs> basically, did you not cede it to them? It it has been ceded to. That's them. the altar of the cats. I mean, basically, <laughs> it's trying really. But like, I don't want to keep that couch. I never wanted that couch in the first place. I just had it interim because my parents needed to get rid of it, and I had space for it. And like, I'm like, okay, well, I guess I could use a couch there, but I don't really need it or want it. Um, and it's not really my style or aesthetic either. Like, it's it's like a a prior decade you know like it's it's old now would you accept your dad's tools yes interesting tools are different why Uh uh-huh they're not they're not they're functional things that are not aesthetic they're not there's nothing stylistic about them there's nothing generational um not generational what what am i looking for um there's nothing uh, era specific, really, about them. They will function. About tools. In, people might disagree, but if you're okay, a tool people aficionado, people are absolutely if you're a, t- if, if, that, if you're yeah. a tool aficionado, you can Hold disagree. On. This is but, how I drill a hole. But what I'm it's saying so is, you can feel each grain. Sorry. But what I'm saying <laughs> is, tools will still work regardless of their looks. They like do the job. But a couch won't. A couch, no. No. I mean, and some tools honestly don't either. Like, if you wear them down enough, they do get kind of shitty and they don't work as well anymore. Right. But do like, they work? N- no, like, for example, like if a. They become old, unsafe, you throw them Yeah, away like there. you throw them away. Repair them. So, like, hand a, a screw. If it takes. Hand, you, if, okay, if you simple, have, if, the simpler the tool is, the easier it is to pass down. The, the more complex it is, the harder it is. Like, right, right, for example, so no, no, so, a sander that's motorized. Oh, yeah. As soon as that motor fucking goes, that's garbage. Whereas, like, a lathe or something would be a lot more. My. You know, permanent. My, so, a handsaw and a wood stool are the same object to you. Because they no. both in their simplicity still function. No, because it depends on the space and the use of them. Do I need it? Am I going to make use of it? Okay. So tools have like just of the zero to 100, like zero utility, but looks amazing, like pieces of art. And 100 is like 100% utility, but it looks like crap. So, so zero is all Milwaukee stuff. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Well, he's nice. Except for when they don't work, and then it's just a piece of shit. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, our sponsor today. Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so you're saying tools just easily fall into the 100 bucket. Like, well, So don't usually, worry about too much. Y- usually. Like, screwdriver, 
probably not going to fuck that up. That, yeah. That's going to be functional, right? Um, drill a, press? Drill press, press, maybe. That's That could be very functional, but like... How often am I gonna? How often am I gonna use it? Do I need it? What is the utility for me personally? Um, A sander, like versus like just sandpaper, um, could be very useful if it's functional. But if like the motor's crap, or Mm -hmm. if it's old, or if some piece is broken, or like like, a five pound extra thing, you're just doing command man stuff. Well, like. Things break you down over time. Yeah, they right. do. And the more complex they are, the easier it is for it to break down. Just like society. Just Sorry, like society. Yep. So, like, I had a sander and, like, a piece broke off of it. Yeah, I could probably get a new piece to repair it. Or I could just buy a new fucking sander. It's probably the same amount of cost, ultimately, for Wait, me. what piece broke off? Uh, like, a there was a clip thing and... Yeah, I don't... I... Whatever. I, I don't know enough about it. Uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That just dad and me as having no kids just interjected like, "What broke? Yeah, what broke? I don't Let's see if we can fix it." Uh, yeah. Because happy... why buy a new thing when you, you have could, a thing that did work, well, but you could probably fix it? Well, sure. Or you could just not worry about the fixing part of it and just buy a new thing. It's yeah, a lot that's easier. The, way more money, and yeah, then, but but then you're, less... then you're then you're seeding the use of what you had. As opposed to, like, fixing it for cheaper, and then yeah, that, but... if it were to break again, there is that fix that mm. you know that you could pass on. Mm. And then that sander, albeit probably other mechanical issues yeah. would happen. Yeah. Yeah. It's the obstinance, it's, it's, it's the it's... obstinance of a dad not being a father. Well, I actually think that your or just by noon, it's example easy. of saying, hey, I'm going to just make my own stool, or I'm going to make my own bookshelf or end table... Is something that I imagine dads just did, right? I'm gonna mend this fence. Like when I think about my dad, it was always him fixing something. Like mm-hmm. I thought that was his hobby. No, he was just a really cheap son of a bitch. <laughs> um, but you could also have that as your hobby. Mm-hmm. So it adds yeah, as like, like. Well, in my adolescence, uh, I don't. <laughs> well, 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 my childhood home mm-hmm. was being built. We lived in a garage that was. I split a literal garage door. With my brother, and those were our childhood bedrooms. Oh, God. For, like, a year and a half. Oh, my God. And then we moved into a fucking 4,000 square foot home. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then what was our home turned into my dad's shop, where he put all of his pet projects that he never did, all of his expensive tools he never used, oh. and all of that stuff. So it's... it's I'm a... Uh, God, I I was born in the 70s, yet was born in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Of just like, I get the frugality and the idealization of, fuck yeah, I can fix it. They made it. I can make it better. But here's the other philosophy is, you know, it's okay to pay someone else for your time. For your time. Someone who's an expert, who knows what they're doing, who can do it faster and better than you could ever fucking do. And safer. And Uh safer. Essentially. How many times have you changed your oil in your car? I, never. I, never. How many times have you changed your oil? Never. I mean, once. I'm sure I it could do it. I'm sure I could watch experience. your fucking YouTube video and do it for much cheaper. But you know what? It's not worth my fucking time, Micah. But it is. It's not. Yes, it is. Not really. Until I bought a foreign car, I changed my motor oil. And instead of being $90, it was 25 Yeah. It was 25 and I had to visit my parents. Yeah. That's all. Or, not worth my time, I'd rather just have someone else do it for me. That is worth my time. To Actually, me, okay. go ahead. I, I will pay the I go to my time. Honda dealership, which I know I'm paying a ridiculous amount overhead for, right? but then I can have their, uh, their coffee, and they have all these little cookies, little and I can just there, sit yeah. by myself. Wait, so you're getting $90 of coffees and cookies to mitigate you just changing the oil yourself? No. I am spending $90 with the coffees and cookies so I can spend an hour and 30 minutes away from my loving family. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. This is the thing. It's see, fucking this is the thing. Well it is worth paying someone else for your time well, to do it sometimes. No, no, it's not. Because 
part of the thing I've learned is that when you do this, you got to bring your goddamn kid there because they have a playground. So now I have to be the good dad and bring my kids Luckily, with me. Luckily, I don't have that problem. But yeah, but but you're for right. me, it's, it's worth it. Was your three hours waiting worth it? That wasn't for an oil change. Fair. So. What's the longest wait for an oil change? Mm. Like Usually, yeah, like less than an hour. Yeah. It's it's super fast. Especially if, go in the morning, just yeah. Yeah, I drop my car off. I still wait for an hour. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. an hour. And usually, it's not just an oil change. Usually, it's an oil change and a tire rotation and a the full you do when you're and a full and a full point inspection. So they like rotate your tires. They check your brakes. They check your tire um, wear. And like let you know, like, hey, do you need new tires soon? No. So Great. is that is that a benefit of our modern society that people do not and it's less do than not a... have that same control over their vehicle that is their main means of getting to their? Sorry, uh, say that one more time. You, you said that a really long, convoluted way. Is it Peterson. good <laughs> to delegate? Yes. All of that when you with minor education in what your vehicle needs on these inspections as opposed to giving it to some 20 year old grease monkey who does this for a living and does it every day yeah but sarah you don't always like repair things uh let me rephrase it you you repair things usually on your own before you hire some son of a bitch plumber that's going to charge you a thousand bucks. Yes. Right? So yep. you clearly know. Sometimes, yeah. You know depends how to do the, things. And you know how to research to do things. And you have a depends on the It depends on the cost. Plumbing, sometimes. If I don't have the tools, yeah, I'll call a plumber. But generally, I do have. Like, plumbing's generally pretty simple. I can usually fix something myself you can research also, it i can research it people, yeah you know but like you have the tools books. to change your own oil i need her yeah two ramps. it is fairly yeah, dangerous though it's... for the ramp side if you don't do it right well i would A rather a dollar investment for but any here's, other oil here's range? the thing i for would rather Ugh, I, fucking hate ramps. I would rather do it on like the same schedule as my tire rotations, which I can't do on myself. I can't. I cannot do a tire rotation myself. And usually, but often tire rotations are because you use synthetic in your vehicle, right? I have no idea. So you have a fully so five thousand or ten thousand. It's 5, actually it was eight thousand last time. Wow, was, German engineering is amazing. Japanese, anyway. No German, ten thousand. I have no idea. I think it was eight thousand. Right. I mean, all that is. Uh, Oh, it's fairly arbitrary. It, it's it's I don't know the computers. Like, the I, one I don't think oil it. spoils as it did back when it yeah. was not synthesized to be as pure as it is. So I think a lot of that is very arbitrary upon the manufacturer's mm -hmm. discretion in order to keep you as a recurring customer. Capitalism. I think that's part of it. <laughs> Capitalism. But no. I think it's you know oil does like, need to be changed rotations? regardless. Usually it has always. Previously been 3,000 miles. Now it's like 5,000. No. Eventually it'll be zero miles when we all have to get stupid electric cars yeah, because be California great. is going to no. phase up fucking piston ones. Great. But that's better. Maybe. Yes. Because Likely. then we should already now be... Like, different topic. Yep. Sorry. Different anyway. topic. <laughs> permanence. Yes. About permanence. Isn't public transit something we should put upon the future generations that even though we may not see the benefits of, we should pay into? Ha <laughs> ha! Brought it back. Nice. And also, mm. no. Why would we have to use public transport at all? Everything could just be given straight. Have down. you driven on the fucking highways, Phil? Let me complete my sentence. <laughs> Go to the metaverse. <laughs> now you can yell at me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hold on while I look at the, uh... Uh... Eiffel Tower and the Basilica in whatever the horrible meme is that looks worse than anything N64 ever produced, including Superman. There you go. We can all just have no permanence whatsoever. Welcome to the metaverse and we can never drive on a freeway again because little Autobots would come in and give you your and we can just daily see it from from our, foods. Yeah, we can just see it from our virtual I didn't see it because you're doing other fucking things. You're on fucking Mars. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, hey, hold on. I got my grilled cheese waiting for me. You know what? Here's a good idea. See you guys idea. back at the Mariner Valley. So we should like create like 
an exercise program, right? Like an exercise app. But instead of like biking through like the Sahara Desert or something, you're biking through fucking Mordor. <laughs> like, you, that you would know, be fucking cool. You know that exists. What? You know that exists. Who made this? It's and where not can canonical I get it? with token. I want just, I want the, a the, I want the, a treadmill uh-huh. with with the fucking Wait, I want to run a on your back? I want to run through Rivendell and why because well, that'd, that'd be mean. fucking beautiful just that would be New Zealand yeah that's way better without the gaudy architecture I want the gaudy ac- architecture I want the fantasy experience I want to run past fucking Elrond like sipping tea in his little gazebo what or something. I don't fucking care. Whatever. He could have some fucking non or whatever. I don't give he a shit. He is scotch through and through. You do not live through three ages of men and not just be like, Tea is it? Fucking something hard. It's tea in quotes. Anyway, <laughs> doesn't matter. Point is, I want fucking an app designed for exercise that goes through like fantasy worlds or sci-fi worlds. I don't, I'm not picky. It should be super easy to do. Right? You're right. I Probably. Know. Well, here's the thing. People who pe- people who make exercise equipment like that do not have the imagination for sci-fi or fantasy well, because they've spent well. their entire lives. Man, they could make so much money on exercise machine. Listen, yeah. listen yeah. Peloton, if you're listening, you aren't, but if you're listening, this They is, won't even take this. this take is, it for free. This is a $1000 idea. This is a million dollar idea. Uh, no, it's not. A month. You know, oh, yeah, day, because really. it's a subscription service. Yes. It is a subscription service. But how much are you can You know for what? You know how much I want a Peloton? Zero dollars right now. Here's I do not thing. fucking want it. But if, if you offered me fucking a bike through, like a bicycle super, ride through amazing. fucking oh. Mordor, I'd be like tempted. Blade Runner? No. Sir, I'd be sir, fucking sir, sir. tempted. Here's, 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 here's super cool. Sadly, million dollars. you're missing. Yeah. Current IPs. If you want to make this profitable... Bike through Worlds of Warcraft. Eh, I don't care about that. Mordor. Just, just uh, hook it up. Bike with... through Worlds of Warcraft. Yeah, well, that's... Just get it through Fortnite, and since they already have all the IPs... No, there but, you go. no, 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 because they don't Boom. have the terrain. It's still the same terrain, regardless Goku with a shotgun. Uh, but, Worlds of Warcraft. What about going from Iron Forge? I want fucking... Zero. No. Whatever the human place is. I want like, fucking I Frodo. Bored, so. I want Fro- I want Frodo on a Nazgul or something riding next to me. That's what I want. I want him like. How's that going to correspond with you biking? I'm on a Nazgul, right? How like we're biking fucking relate to a Nazgul. I don't know, man. It just works <laughs> in my world. Come on, nerds, figure it yeah, out. Yeah, figure it like, out. A row machine, maybe? Maybe. Ooh, I don't yeah. know. And you are the Nazgul? We are the Nazgul. And you get to pick who rides you? And, like, some evil wow. dude is, like, riding on the back. Yeah, it yes. plays both ways. Anyway. Fuck. <laughs> we can make <laughs> like, so much all right, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, hold on. Stop this. We we may have a business opportunity. See? Every time. <laughs> every time. Every time we have a podcast. <laughs> at least one. Just do it for free. I just don't care. Do it for I free! I will. <laughs> Here's my money. Here, just take my yeah, fucking take money. Yeah, just take my money, and I will... I will God. buy a Kickstart wonderful VR system. Hell, you you know enjoy. what? You can make this I mean, a zombie just... run. Like they oh, have, yeah. they fucking Pokemon Go, right? Like you can yeah. make a zombie run. You just run oh, from fucking beautiful. zombies. They're coming at you, and if you fail, you get eaten. You know, like or you get bit, whatever. And the monkeys will chase you. Yep. Yeah. And then you have to start over the next day mm-hmm. until you you know escape the zombies, and then you've made it to the. This, the new safe we zone. You have to run so far to catch that yep. Pikachu. Well, dear listener, I'm glad you've held on through this long, and you definitely won't exploit all of our business ideas to our detriment because this will be out in, I don't know, oh, yeah. however long. But at that point, we will make a million and we will sue you <laughs> at the end of time because so we have the copyright for all of this as well as our partnerships with the IP. So stay out of this, Uzbek! Also, oh. don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Thanks. Bye. Also, don't forget, Mike is a fucking liar. Go ahead. Just make it. I don't care. I'll buy it. <laughs> Shut up and take my money. Yeah. Okay, also, <laughs> thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom. <laughs>